Welcome to Barry Citadel on April the 25th. We're so glad that you chose to join with us this morning. If you're new to our live stream, you'll see a number, a phone number and an email. Why don't you reach out to us so we can contact you and let you know what's happening here and connect further with you. Some family core news, our condolences to Terry Martin on the passing of his sister Pat. Please continue to pray for the family. Also, uh, Jeremy Wiseman on the passing of his niece, Alana. Please pray for the family. As most of you know by now, I've received a new appointment and I'm happy to announce that Majors Linda and Jeff Groves have been appointed to our church. Please pray for me, Linda and Jeff, during this transition. My last Sunday at Barry Citadel will be on June the 27th. This afternoon at 2 p.m., Just Kids with Major Sandy and Bramwell and join us daily for our devotions on Facebook and on YouTube. Uh, this is my story. Uh, this week, Willie is going to do hers, and we're looking for others to give us your story. This is my story. I want to do video testimony, so please reach out to Frances at the church office number, and she'll give you all the details that you need. Our Partners in Mission Committee is really hard at work. They've done a great job, and some difficult times, of course, after locking the church down, but they've still been able to go ahead with our online auction. It starts Friday, Friday, May the 1st. Uh, 
why don't you uh, donate something? Help us out. Contact Sandy Martin for more details. Remember, our goal is $30,000. There's a poster that Jim has created right behind me, and it'll give you everything that you need. The auction website, you, you get it from our website, barrysalvationarmy.org slash events slash the auction. Why don't you check it out? Check out the auction. Tell your friends. We're looking to raise as much money as we possibly can for partners in mission. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Our call to worship this morning, very, very well-known scripture text, Psalm 23. I've decided to read it today from the New Living Translation. And it says, The Lord is my shepherd, I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. What a song we're going to sing now to follow that up. Crown him with many crowns, the Lamb upon his throne. Let's sing it together, friends. Oh, 
endless light Then bursting forth in glorious day Up from the grave he rose again And as he stands in victory Since Christ has lost his grip on me Hi kids, today is uh, a celebration at Just Kids of everybody's birthday. We're going to try to um, have a good time even though we have to do it virtually. Bramwell's here. What have you got in your mouth? Oh, I see what it is. You found it. Yes, well, I left it there and... Uh, it's quite nice. It has butterflies on it, and on the inside it says, let's see, it says, wishing you a lifetime of praise and thanksgiving. Happy birthday. No, it's mine. <laughs> My birthday's in a couple of days, yes. Yeah. And uh, that, that's one of the reasons why we're going to have everybody's birthday on Sunday at Just Kids. And I get to celebrate my birthday, too. And it's nice to get cards. Yeah. Um, but for most of us, birthdays over the last year have not been celebrated the way we're used to celebrating them. Um, I suppose sending a card is a, okay, but you nice to see people in person, isn't it? And uh, we're really lucky because we can do Zoom and we can talk to each other. And we can see each other's faces. Can you imagine what it was like a long time ago when people couldn't do any of those things? Well, that's right. Um, there is an important Salvation Army birthday in April. It's William Booth's birthday. I did some math. And William Booth, who, with his wife Catherine, founded the Salvation Army. If he was... Alive today, he would be 192 years old. No, he's not alive. <laughs> but um, he lived in a time when I suppose sending a birthday card in the mail would be the only way you could wish somebody a happy birthday unless you were with them. There were some other ways of sending messages. Later on, when William Booth was an old man, he wanted to send a message to all of the officers and soldiers and people who attended the Salvation Army. And he wanted to tell them something very important. He wanted to tell them what should be the center of their lives. No, he couldn't phone them on a cell phone. No, he couldn't go on Facebook. He certainly couldn't do Zoom. In fact, 
he was a very old man and he was very sick. And there was a big gathering of officers and soldiers just after Christmas. And he wanted to send a message. And the only way to send it was a telegram. You've heard of those. <laughs> That's right. The problem with the telegram was it was very expensive. And they charged for every word. That's right. If you sent happy birthday to you, you were charged for four words. Well, it was pretty expensive and Booth didn't want to waste any of the money that was given to help other people on a telegram. So he thought a lot and then he thought about the message that he would like them to hear. And when the telegram was opened, it only had one word. I wonder how many people listening know what that word was. No, it wasn't happy birthday. That's two words. No, it wasn't hello. You can't guess. No, I wonder if any of the kids can guess. It's six letters and it begins with the letter O. It was the word others. And William Booth wanted everyone to understand that they should live their lives as Jesus did for others. That's pretty good use, isn't it, of technology? Well, it's about the only technology they had in those days. But he wasn't afraid to use it. You know what? I think if William Booth was alive today, he would be using Zoom and Facebook and Messenger and Twitter and everything he could get his hands on. And you know what? I think his message for us right now in the midst of this COVID time would be exactly the same as it was in 1910. That's what, 111 years ago, and it would be others. We should be thinking of how we can help others. Yes, this week we should be making it a project to celebrate William Booth's birthday in April. We can make a project this week to think of others, to try to do things to help other people have a good week. Well, I think we figured out how to have cake on Sunday, but it's not quite what we planned because we can't deliver anything. Oh yeah, I think we can play some games and we're going to listen to a Bible story about someone who made peace. So that's a good thing, right? Yeah. And we will try this week to think about others. Right. Blow the kids a kiss. Here we go. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Right. And the word for this week is others.
This is my testimony how I came to Jesus Christ as my Savior. I had emigrated to Canada and married a man who was actually from the same town as I was, where I was born. We had a few children and my husband did not want to go to the church where we got married. So we searched around in Toronto for a church that we liked and we ended up in a little Pentecostal church in Scarborough. It, we loved it there. It was so unusual. Uh, a lot of people were healed in front of the church. People came to Christ. And also there was like speaking in tongues with interpretation, words of prophecy. We had never ever seen anything like it. It was a thrill. It was lovely. One night I dreamt a dream that I was left behind and I knew what it meant. It meant that Jesus had come back to earth and I was left behind. It really scared me, but I didn't tell people. During the summer, Roy, my husband and the kids and I, we went to a house church in Stony Creek. And it was an evening service. At the end of the evening, a gentleman talked to me and I was sharing the dream with him. And he said to me, Willie, really, the Lord is calling you. And I said to him, what do you mean the Lord is calling me? He said, can I ask you a question? I said, sure. He said to me, do you believe that Jesus Christ has died for the world? I said, yes, I believe that. Do you believe that Jesus Christ has died for you? I said, wait a minute, I have to think about that. And then I said, yes, I believe he has died for me. The next question he asked, would you like to give your life to Jesus Christ? Well, that was a question people had asked me in my 20s several times and I had said no. But this time I was actually surprised. I said, yes. So I asked Jesus Christ to come into my life, to forgive my sin and to make him the Lord of my life. And I believed that I would have eternal life. Roy, my husband, and the kids and I, we drove home that evening. Nothing spectacular had changed. I still felt the same. And I started reading the Bible more. I read in the Bible that people who had believed in Jesus Christ, that they usually were baptized. And I thought, I want that too. I want to be baptized. I had never seen a baptism like going under into the water. I'd never seen it before, but I found a past that I wanted to be baptized. And I was. And I still wanted more. In this little Pentecostal church, people, they had so much joy, the same as I had seen in that house church. And I wanted it too. One evening by myself, I went to a healing service. I needed healing, I had sore legs, I was pregnant again and I really wanted to be filled with the Holy Spirit. At the end of the service, a gentleman um, talked to me and I said, people have prayed for me eight times and nothing has happened. He said, are you scared? I said, yes, it is such an unusual experience. I am actually a little scared. And he, before he started praying, um, he rebuked that fear in me, in the name of Jesus, and I felt that go. Then he prayed for healing and the filling in of the Holy Spirit. And after the prayer, he said, do you believe that Jesus has filled you with the Holy Spirit? Yes, I said, I believe. And he said, do you believe he had, that Jesus has healed your legs? Yes, I believe that he has healed my legs. He said, now go and talk to the people in the lobby over there, tell them what Jesus has done for you. And I did tell them that the Lord healed me and that he filled me with the Holy Spirit. I drove home that night, woke up Roy, he was asleep already, 
and told him what had happened. The next morning, I was just flooded with joy. So much love, my whole body was tingling. And I spoke in tongues, and I was absolutely thrilled. Actually, that experience lingered on continually, but that being flooded with joy, I felt so loved by the Lord. That was the beginning of the experience of following Christ and throughout the years, Jesus Christ has never left me, even when Roy and I went through some very, very traumatic experiences. The Lord was with me. And even last year, the Lord never left me. He is the strength of my life. My husband passed away last year. Throughout the year, Jesus Christ is still the same. And I love following him. And that is my testimony, how I came to know Jesus Christ, how I started following him. He still is the savior of the world, today and forever. Scripture reading this morning is taken out of John's Gospel. John chapter 10, starting at verse 11, it says this, Jesus speaking, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd who owns the sheep. So when he sees a wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he's a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as a father knows me and I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life, only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it back up. This command I received from my father. And Father God, this morning as we open up your word, I just ask that you would open our minds to the message that you have for each and every one of us today. Father, open our hearts so that we can be passionate, compassionate, empathetic people. Father, we do this because we love you and serve you through the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Well, the Good Shepherd... I heard a story about two men who were asked to read Psalm 23. The first one, who was an orator, stood in front and started reading. He read with so much voice technicalities, as if you were listening to a drama on the radio. He knew when to pause, when to read faster, when to soften his voice, when to speak louder. In short, he read the passage really well. And the people gave him a standing ovation when he was finished. The second, it was the second man's turn, and he stood in front and started reading. But unlike the first one, this man had no background in public speaking. He just read the passage calmly, yet with deep emotions. And after he read, no one applauded. Everyone was silent. After a short while of silence, the first man stood up again and said, Do you know how the two of us differ? I know the psalm, but he knows the shepherd. Our passage today is about the good shepherd. And I would like that all of us would reflect and ask ourselves this one question. Do we know... The Good Shepherd. Not do we know of the Good Shepherd, but do we know the Good Shepherd? It's a question I think that we often ask ourselves, how well do we know this Shepherd? Not only do we know that he's the Good Shepherd, we know that it's Jesus that we're speaking of. The second member of the Trinity. The Good Shepherd. 
I wonder if we've actually ever really thought about this scripture passage and reflected deeply on it. I think even as children, we probably all have images. I remember a painting that I had in my bedroom that was Jesus with a lamb on his shoulders, carrying this lamb, protecting the lamb. I think over and over again over the last few years, I've posted this meme, and it says that Jesus left the 99. Aren't you glad that when you were the one, it was you that he went after? So there's all these beautiful images throughout Scripture. The 23rd Psalm, the image of the shepherd. So today's passage, I want to look at the characteristics of the Good Shepherd. And in response to those characteristics, how do we see that at work in our own lives? If we are claiming that we are one of the sheep, then we are the ones being led by the Good Shepherd. The first thing I, characteristic I noticed when I was reading this scripture text is that he's selfless. This good shepherd is selfish. Uh, sorry, selfless. According to what I've read about sheep, many are saying that sheep are prone to danger. They don't have the capacity, the ability to defend themselves from wild animals who would come to attack them. They're helpless, so if they get stuck in a crevice, they can't get themselves out. They require somebody, a shepherd, a good shepherd, who never leaves his sheep. Doesn't allow them to be attacked by stronger animals. He'd rather get hurt or even killed for the sake of his sheep. See, even those that are lost in sin, those who, who have nobody they think they still have Jesus to defend them. Those that are on the verge of death and bondage to sin, they still have this shepherd to defend them, this selfless sacrifice. The good shepherd claimed these words three times, saying, I lay down my life for the sheep. Just as how Jesus selflessly sacrificed his life for us sinners, and it's not because we did anything worthy of death. It's because he loves us, because he is good, because he selflessly sacrifices for our salvation. See, we can never pay him anything in return. It's not about what he gets out of it. But still, because he's the good shepherd, he's willing to lay down his life for his sheep. The shepherd, good shepherd, allows the sheep to be hopeful. I know that sounds weird, doesn't it? Because we don't really think of the animal sheep as hopeful, but as his sheep, he gives us hope. Because of his selflessness, we have hope. Those who know the good shepherd find hope, believe in him, and have hope, have belief in him, and have eternal life. A hope that whatever hardships come along, whatever pain that we're going through, that Jesus is there with us. His rod and his staff, they comfort us. So we see ourselves living with so much hope despite the pain, the sufferings, or even having a tiring life to live. We have hope in a risen Savior. We have hope in a good shepherd selflessly sacrificing does our hope fade away from season to season for some yeah i think during the last year during this pandemic i think our hope if it's not deeply rooted in the good shepherd our hope wanes our hope goes the question then is how true is the resurrection to you how true is Jesus coming back for you and for me, to you, to me? It's a question we have to ask ourselves. The second thing I want to look at is that the shepherd is relational. Because of his selfless sacrifice, there's a broken relationship that's mended. Again, we're talking now metaphorically, right? Because we're talking about God and, and mankind and the shepherd and the sheep. That, in that relationship... 
was once a strong relationship, but gets broken. And there, again, is the good shepherd. Because of our sins and our transgressions, the good shepherd wants a relationship. It's hard to believe. Because of those things, and maybe in spite of those things, he still wants a relationship. He says in verse 14, I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. It's amazing, isn't it? He knows us. He knew us. Scripture says that God knew us before we were knitted in our mother's wombs. That relationship started then. What does it mean for the sheep? Well, it means as sheep, we can have a conversation with the living Christ. Because we're in a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, we have the ability to communicate, to talk to him. God listens to us. And if we take time and listen, we'll hear God speaking to us. God knows you. He knows the number of hairs on your head. Now for me, that's not a lot. But for some of you, that's a lot of hairs to know the number on your head. He cares enough about you to know about the amount of hair on your head. He knows every single detail of what's happening in your life. See, tell him everything. Tell him how you feel. King David was great during the Psalms, wasn't he? He cried out how many times to God. His emotions were raw and, and very, very on the surface with God because there was this relationship that they had. And it's a relationship that you can have. What we need to do is pray. And when we stop praying, pray more. And when we stop praying, pray more. We need to be in constant communication with God. Through this conversations, we find ourselves into a deeper relationship with the Good Shepherd. Through prayer, through reading your Bible, through digging deeper into your Word. I mean, it's so true that God wants a deep, true relationship with you. When we look again at the Shepherd, He's a good keeper. He's a good keeper. I also read something about shepherds. In the ancient times, the, they slept in front of the pen's door. So the sheep couldn't get out. There was no door itself. They were the passageway. They were the door. Nobody got past them. He kept them away from danger. I don't know about how many of you, but when I was younger, I used to love to ride roller coasters. And I think the thing for me with roller coasters was, it was dangerous. And it was scary. And there was kind of a threat to my life. You know, when they, set, they buckle you in and then they make sure they check that buckle? And that's for a good reason, right? And then you see it start moving and turning and going faster and going up and going down. And with all those safety gears still wrapped around you, you don't really feel completely safe. But let me tell you, when you've got the shepherd sleeping in front of the pen door, you can feel safe. Right? I lay down my life for the sheep. I do it willingly. Nobody told me I had to do it. But then I take it up again, willingly. See, in life we face threats every day. Threats to our finances, to our family relationships, to our marriages, to our children, to our jobs, in all aspects of our life. But having a shepherd that sleeps in front of the door. It doesn't mean that the ferocious animals aren't going to attack the door. It just means they're not going to get past the shepherd. It's not 
a relationship that assures us that we're not going to have trouble in this world. But what it does assure us is that Jesus Christ will be there to guide us, to comfort us. His rod and staff from Psalm 23 that will guide us and comfort us when we go through those times in our lives where we're under attack. Without that suffering good shepherd, we'd be in trouble. Most of us today are experiencing these kinds of threats in our life. But despite the danger knowing that our good shepherd is a good keeper, we can respond in a positive way. See, as sheep, we need to be dependent upon the shepherd. Without knowing the enemy, we leave it in the shepherd's hands. He knows the enemy. He will help us with fear, anxiety. He's helping us to find a way to get through. When we give up, it's when God takes over. And sometimes we're so hard on ourselves and we give up on ourselves. But you know what? I was reminded of a story the other day. And it was talking to a friend of mine and he says, you know, we're all adopted, aren't we? We're all adopted children of God. And there's an old Roman law that uh, you you could disown your children. A lot of Roman citizens had all kinds of children all over the place, and they could disown their natural-born children, but it was against the law to give up on an adopted child. Do you know why? Because they're chosen. You chose to adopt that child. And I thought, what a great image of the shepherd that chooses us, right? Chooses me, chooses you. Loves us in spite of us. We're adopted. Chosen people. Great image. The Lord is reminding us today that we've got to hold on. Depend on Him. Not on yourself. Depend on His faithfulness. Not the lies of the world. We find ourselves as sheep depending on the Good Shepherd at all times. We have come to the realization that knowing the Good Shepherd entails a response from his sheep. We said that because the Shepherd is selfless, the sheep can have hope. Because the Shepherd is relational, we can have conversation with him. And because he's a good keeper, we can depend. On him. Every characteristic of the Good Shepherd should reflect in the lives of his sheep. Here's the question How well do you know the Good Shepherd? This morning, if you don't know the Good Shepherd, If you have not been in a relationship with the Good Shepherd and you don't think that there's anybody that cares or anybody that's going to give you hope, let me tell you, there's hope found in the Good Shepherd. This morning the band played a beautiful band selection uh, in Quiet Pastures and one of the songs in this is my appeal song this morning and it says, Unto thee will I cry, Shepherd, hear my prayer. Poor and needy am I, Shepherd, hear my prayer. Deep is calling on to deep. Rugged are the heights and steep. Guide my steps and keep. Hear, oh hear my prayer. Let the foe not prevail. Shepherd, hear my prayer. My resources would fail. Shepherd, hear my prayer. Order all my steps aright. Carry me from height to height. Yonder shines the light. Shepherd, lead me there. Lead me safely there. 
this morning as we reflect on those words. Cry out to the Good Shepherd and listen to his response. Let's sing together, friends. Our closing song, what else could it be but simply trusting every day, trusting in the stormy way, even when my faith is small, trusting Jesus. That is all. Let's sing it together, friends.
and our sung benediction. Lord, if your presence does not stay with us, friends, have a great week. Put your trust in the Good Shepherd.